Hello everyone and welcome back to another Thursday edition of Whiskey Uncorked where today we will be reviewing another whiskey that has been getting a tremendous amount of attention over the last couple of years from the online whiskey community in the Thompson Brothers Blended Malt SRV5. So as we jump right into this, let's just say that the Thompson Brothers have been doing fantastic work over the last several years now, both with their independent bottlings and with their blending operations. They do, I think they've done some other things, but their primary uh, two bottles that they've done have been this blended malt, which is eight years old, bottled at 48.5% ABV, and is called the SRV5. Now, here in the US, there's some sort of trademark issue, and these bottles are called the Redacted Brothers. So the other whiskey that they do is a blended scotch, which we will be doing a review of shortly, and that has also gotten some fantastic reviews and alongside the McCa uh, the McLean's nose, excuse me, have really kind of revitalized uh, this blended scotch category. But today we're going to talk about the blended malt. Let's do some tasting notes, get you a score and get you all on your way. All right. So first off, I just want to say about this bottle. Again, I mentioned this is 48.5%. It is a blended malt. It is non-chill filtered, natural color. Uh, this costs about $55 here in the U.S., at least around me. KNL is the one place I know that carries this. It's $55 plus tax, and I will at least have to pay to have it shipped. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, being a blended malt, I'm not sure what's in this. I see some people speculate online. Um, I don't believe that they've disclosed what it is. It is also a batch product. So given uh, you know the different versions of this that have come out over the last few years, it's possible that it's different distilleries at different times. But for the most part, this thing has gotten fantastic, uh, a fantastic response from the online community, basically since it appeared on shelves. One of the driving factors behind its popularity is its price. In the UK, this is coming out at 31 pounds or maybe 31, 32 pounds. And for a 48.5% non-show filter, naturally colored blended malt, it's a fantastic price. And its quality is pretty high even at just eight years of age. So we'll talk about value. Again, it's not quite as great of a value here in the States, at least at this point, but let's jump right into the nosing and tasting notes and find out if I agree with everyone's assessment that this is a fantastic whiskey. All right, on the nose. So I think the first thing that's evident is this is probably primarily bourbon casks, if not entirely. It definitely is carrying that maltiness. There's some lemon, dry hay. and I, But I think the big note that jumps out that differentiates this, it's like character, is this like fleshy yellow fruit. Yeah, that is, it's not a hyper complex whiskey. Obviously it's only eight years old. You do get maybe a little bit of fermentation notes. There's some grain quality here, but Mixed with that yellow fruit and the maltiness, and obviously you can say honey and all the things, right? <laughs> There's, um, there. this is mostly a young bourbon cask forward whiskey, at least in my opinion. But that yellow fruit note really ties everything together. It's almost, it's even leaning almost towards like a mango or kind of an underripe mango or something like that. The nose ends up being really pleasant. There's almost a little bit of that char. It's not like barrel char. It's like if you took the rind of a lemon, like I think some cocktail bars, they'll take the rind of a lemon or an orange and they'll kind of hit it with like a kitchen torch or something like that and just get it, like really kind of cook those oils and kind of char that the zest a little bit. Definitely some of that in here. So I'm actually really liking the nose. It's nice, especially for a younger whiskey. Um, I definitely, in my mind, was thinking that this reminded me of a bit of a cross between, say, like a Glencadam 10 and the Brook Lottie Classic Laddie. Like, there's just, like, really nice blending of those two things. Yeah, and it's just, it's pleasant. It's, it's simple, but it's fragrant, and it's, there's enough distinct things to make it interesting and kind of fun. But with that, let's try it on the palate. Cheers. So every time I take a sip of this, every, it's like a little different, like I'm focusing on something else. 
there's a lot of texture in this glass. There's right. The youth, I think both on the nose and the palate, I'll get this out up front. This is an eight year old whiskey. There is youth both on the nose and the palate. However, I really feel like it's used as a layer of flavor. If that makes sense, like the Isle of Rasse that I reviewed uh, a month or so ago now, right? That was, it was younger than this, right? They're talking four or five years old. Like it really felt like untamed and it was just young, like very brash. And that, that youth and the gray notes were just kind of the dominant thing that was happening. It, this really feels like the grain notes are being used as a flavor in like a layer of that flavor in the overall experience. It's not dominating. It's there until the one, but is that on, on the very back end, like now, so I haven't taken a sip in 10, 15, 20 seconds, whatever it's been. And you can start to get some of that grain alcohol bitterness kind of coming out on the very back of your palate. It's not super strong, but it's present. It's there. You could argue it's a negative, but I think given what it is, it's something that you kind of would expect. This isn't a cask forward cask influence, heavily sherried whiskey. Like this is this young spirit being put out on display and it's being done very well. All right, let's do sip number two. So there's a lot of things that you'd expect. Again, same on the nose. You can call out your malt. You can call out your orchard fruit, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. Your vanillas, your bourbon casky kind of stuff. There's that grain note, but it's very present, but it's not, it's, it's well integrated. The, the one thing that I would say, kind of coming back to that orchard fruit, is there's a really nice kind of ginger green apple alongside like a bunch of apple skins. Now I've heard people use apple skins in, in tasting notes for a long time. And this is the first whiskey I think I've ever called. Like, I'm like, no, that's apple skins. I know what they're talking about now. It's that flavor. Um, it's alongside like the flesh, like of, of apples, like green apples and ginger, as I mentioned, but there's just that overall kind of dryness coming from like a citrusy on the nose. It was like a citrusy, uh, dry hay, but here, yeah, totally 100% apple skins. All right, one more sip. We'll see if we get anything else and I'll try to mention the finish. So the finish again, everything's fairly straightforward. Like this isn't some super complex flavor ride sensation ride, but it's very flavorful. It's very direct, both on the nose and the palate. So the finish is nice. It's, it's malty. So I, I wouldn't be surprised both on the nose and the palate. If there was like an ever so slight hint or some, some peated whiskey in this. If you don't like peat, I wouldn't be worried about it. It is extremely subtle if it's in here, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was a touch of Coila. That's probably the go-to, right? Uh, in, in any sort of blended malt, Coila's famous for being fantastic blending material. So I think there might be a little bit, but this isn't a smoky PD bomb. It's just added just enough to probably help the youth a little bit to like round it out because that peat and grain in the peat on young whiskeys tends to kind of mesh together and kind of hide each other a little bit or kind of round the edges off of that sharp grain note. But yeah, this is a very, very tasty whiskey. So let's give this thing a score. Um, this is good. This is a good whiskey. Uh, there's, there's a couple things you can consider flaws, that kind of grain note on the very back finish there's some slight like again this is on the very back finish like a little shiny maybe a little bit of kind of copper penny flavor and there's a ever so slight touch of that on the very back finish it's not it's not ruining the whiskey at all although it hangs around so finish wise there is a pretty good length here but the tail end of it starts to maybe show the youth but overall, the youth, I think, is used very well in its overall kind of complexity and it's kind of worked into the whiskey. However you do that as a whiskey maker or blender, I have no idea, but that's the way it feels. 
So, I mean, this is right up there with, in quality, with a lot of the 10, 12 year old age stated whiskeys, the 48.5% ABV, you know, right in that 46 range, but probably helps it a touch just to give it a little bit more oomph. Yeah, I was debating six or seven, but I think if you take into account the youth and what is being done here at what should be a fairly affordable price, I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10, very good. I don't have any problem with the seven out of 10. Thought about giving it a six because there are some things that are like, yeah, it's kind of young, but yeah, that's not, it's not a problem. I actually really like this whiskey. So McLean's Nose, which is a blended scotch that has been re released through Adelphi, which owns Arden Amarkin, and there's believed to be quite a bit of Arden Amarkin in the McLean's Nose blended scotch. Uh, that came out in the States here, and I think that was in that $50, $55 range as well. But I just saw that at KNL, it recently dropped again for $35. So I'm hoping maybe we could get this price down a little bit more in line with the UK pricing because at this is basically going to be a 60, $65 bottle after taxes and probably some shipping, unless you're luckily living next to a, a shop that happens to carry this on the shelf. That's pushing it just because it's competing with those 10, 12 year old core range, you know, age statements for like Boonhaven 12 and, uh, you know, Lechik 10 and the Brooklady line and everything like all these great, like 10, 12 year old whiskeys we've been reviewing lately. Um, this is competing with those at that price. It's definitely competing. Even if it does cost that it's not getting blown away. I do think it probably is better served more in that like $45 range instead of the $55 range. I think that's probably where I would feel a little bit more comfortable 40 bucks, even better, but We'll see what happens over time. So value wise, if you are a whiskey enthusiast, you want to get it on the hype. I don't think you'll be disappointed for by this, even if you're paying in that $55, $60 range. I think it's, it's a good example of young whiskey at an eight years old, really, especially this day and age, eight years isn't that young, <laughs> considering we're drinking three, four and five year old stuff. Uh, or at least some of us are. But yeah, it's good value. It's interesting. And it's really, I mean, th this is a masterclass in blending young whiskey, I think. And I can't really say anything else negative about this. Solid value, seven out of 10. Bring the price down $10, $15. And this should be on everyone's shelves. All right. I was really pleased to be able to get a bottle of this once it finally hit the States. These, these value oriented bottles, blended malts, blended scotches, they're hard to, to justify buying uh, from overseas because you pay such a high shipping price. A lot of times you're doubling the price of the bottle. Again, if you're walking out the door at $60 for this, it's buy it once, I guess, and make, it, make up your own mind uh, what you think of it. But this is a real, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I don't know if this would be a staple on my shelf at that $60 price point just because there's other things that I can get for that price. but. We'll talk about a few more uh, examples of this style of whiskey here in both the blend of scotch, the McLean's nose, and maybe a couple other things um, here over the next couple months, try to get reviews out for you. But until then, thank you guys so much for all of your positive feedback. Uh, thank you for your opinions. Keep let me know what you think. Even if you disagree with me, I'm totally cool with that. Let's have a conversation. It was a whole point of the channel to begin with. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Cheers.